Welcome to Sunrise. <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's happened. I have seen the sun, but there is a humongous bank of cloud, which was threatening to turn into a bit of an inversion. But it's it's lifted in. Maybe up at Mam Tor there will be an inversion. But I keep catching a glimpse of the sun, and it keeps disappearing. What can you do? So today is going to be. I don't know what today is going to be, to be fair. I've given up any hope or any thoughts, excuse me, it's a tad on the breezy side, of getting the big camera out because there's no light and I've come out specifically to try and shoot the heather before it dies off and I think it's already turning. There's been some beautiful displays as I've driven up here this morning and it is a carpet of heather for as far as the eye can see, which isn't very far this morning, let me tell you. So I've just got the phone out thinking, I'll just play around and see if I can find a composition so that should, should the light actually appear, I need to stand off the edge of the cliff, um, I'll be ready with a composition. I know, I've gone out of, I've gone out of shot, haven't I? Um, and it's, I don't know. He's almost working. I've come across this little clump with the intention of, of shooting this as the foreground and then that as the background, because that, is, as I say, is just a carpet of heather. It's beautiful with these amazing boulders sticking out of it. If the light ever came through, and it did appear fleetingly then. So it's, yes, it's a bit of an odd one. But the phone is an incredibly useful tool for playing with compositions. I've got a composition here. Oh, no, I've just moved. See, that's the advantage of having a tripod. Uh, I don't tend to use a tripod when I'm using the phone. Is you can just tweak things. That's probably what I want. I'll, I'll do a piece through the phone just so you can see what it is that I'm sort of lining up. Now if you look very, very carefully, you can see the sun. It's there, almost just about there, trying to break through and the blue cloud keeps lifting. Oy. But this was sort of the composition that I worked on. I've got beautiful sort of cascade of heather down here. So that anchors the left hand side. There's a little bit of interest with this rock here. And then the right hand side is anchored by this here rock that's got a really tinchy, tinsy, tinsy piece of heather in front of it. Then we've got some more heather and then it just goes back into the distance with a great big expanse of nothingness at the moment. So that was sort of one thought. And then I was going to turn it vertical, but that's really no good when I'm showing you guys, is it? Oh, look, look! See, I wasn't lying, it's there. <laughs> there it is! Quick, grab it before it goes. And you can see the cloud. Let me just see if I can zoom in a bit. Yes, there she is. You can see the cloud drifting across. And she's gone again. Yeah, God. Um... And that was sort of coming down here. This was the composition that originally caught my eye. I'd have to use the wide angle lens. So I've got the rock coming in down here. We've got heather and it all sort of leads through, including this big rock out here. If that bank of cloud ever lifts, there's a lovely array of heather over here. And then we might get some decent cloud detail. But it's not looking very likely, is it? As you can see, we've got a great big flipping expanse of absolutely nothing and a breeze, which I'm surprised isn't actually blowing away all this heather, um, all this heather, all this mist. Because it is quite breezy. So that's the view for today's sunrise, boys and girls. And I, th I don't think I'm actually inspired enough. See that? That's the most bizarre noise, isn't it? I think it's grouse. I wonder if it's the mating season or something. I'm not inspired enough to get the big camera out. So again, we've got this block of heather 
another block of heather, the two rocks leading you in, some heather sort of filling a gap at this side, and then we'd have an expanse of heather at the back. But as I say, I'm just not inspired enough to get the big camera out. And I was really hopeful when I left home this morning, we'd got clear sky in the main, lots of stars out, it was chilly, so I thought we might get a little bit of a, fo a fog. And as I came over here, I just disappeared into a mass of fog. Hey-ho, what can you do? I've had a good walk. I started off here. And when I got here, you could see the top. And where am I? I'm at Higator. You could see the top of Higator when I arrived. And inside five minutes, the clouds had come in. So I shot off over to Kerber Edge. And I walked Kerber Edge through along Baslow Edge and the cloud was just getting thicker and thicker, but it wasn't sinking. As I drove past or across Surprise View at the top end of Hathersage, I thought, oh, we've got a bit of an inversion going on here, but it's just lifted. Mamtor, maybe there will be an inversion because the, the cloud and the, yeah, the cloud does tend to sit lower. Um, so I, I walked along there and I didn't get inspired there either, <laughs> simply because there was no light. So then I thought, hmm, okay. I could see bits of blue sky coming. So I thought, right, I'll whiz back over to Higator. And when I got here, or as I drove along the road that I call 13 Bends, which is coming from Chatsworth area towards the top end of Sheffield, I could see the sun. It was glorious, huge sun it was, huge. Glowing, and there was that beautiful orange glow that you get when the, the mist and the fog diffuses the light. And then it went again. <laughs> it's just not cricket, is it? I only got up at ten past four this morning to come out here. Hey ho! Right, I'm going to um, take a wander back over there because I'm conscious that if the <laughs> the light does ever break through, I need to be facing this way. So anyway, I need to be facing this way with the sun behind me. Otherwise, I'm going to be shooting to sun, which is my other least favourite occupation. So I will catch you guys in a bit. <laughs> Maybe. So what exactly is it that us photographers and YouTubers, vloggers, whatever you want, videographers, whatever you want to call us, don't tell you? Let me set the scene for you. Your alarm goes off at 10 past four on a Sunday morning. And what you really want to do is lob the damn thing through the window because you actually only went to bed at half past 11 because you got embroiled watching Christina on the coast. <laughs> that might just be me. But instead of lobbing it through the window, you drag your sorry ass out of bed. You stub your toe on the end of the bed because you haven't got the light on, so you've no idea where you're putting your feet down. You manage to get dressed in the semi-dark, conscious of the fact that your next door neighbours are probably cursing you because you're making a huge racket. You fall down the stairs, stumble into the kitchen, knock everything over off the side, make a cup of tea. Ten minutes later than you should have done, you actually fall out of the house, load the van up and head off. And once you're out, you think, you know, actually, this is not too bad. You pick up your cup of tea, Bottom of your thermos mask, uh, thermos flask falls off, and then you burn the inside of your lips because the tea's too flipping hot. <laughs> but you're thinking, oh, no, it's not too bad. Clear skies, stars, little wispy bands of cloud, it's looking good. A little bit of a breeze, a little bit chilly. And I say chilly in, it's all relative. We've had, what? Well, between 20 and 30 degrees just lately, and it's 10. So it feels a little bit cool. I'll tell you what, autumn's arrived. And you're thinking, yeah, gonna have a good morning, this. And then you get to where you're going and think, ah, oh, that mountain, or that mountain, that hill's disappeared. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea. I know, I'll go to Kerber Edge. Never lets me down. Pootle over to Kerber, it's only another 20 minute ride. Pootle over to Kerber Edge, get out. A really good walk along Kerber Edge. Cross through uh, Baslow Edge. There's no sign of the sun. 
So you think, oh, the light will come in a minute. You can't see any compositions because by now your head's thinking, hmm, do you really want to be doing this? So you head back to the car. I know, I'll go back to Higatol. And you head back and you think, oh, oh, I can see some blue sky. I can see the sun. The sun's blinding me. I haven't got my sunglasses on. I said, oh, this is going to be better. This is more like it. And you get back up to Higatol. By which time all the car parking spaces have gone, obviously. And you take a mosey on up. And the cloud rises again behind the sun. I think the cloud and the sun are having a race this morning to see who can rise the highest and the quickest. So you wander along. Yeah, I'll get my phone out, try a couple of compositions, see what works. Determined not to be beaten. And then you think, you know what? Sod it. So then you go and sit your backside on a very cold rock and talk to you lot. All the while, keeping a wary eye. Oh, look, we, we can see clouds and we can... See, when I say clouds, I mean clouds as opposed to mist. And we've got blue sky. Still got no foreground interest. Still got no midground interest, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, so that's the morning of a photographer. There's, there's another guy over there. God knows what you're shooting because there's no light. <laughs> there's a lassie just walked past. She's obviously had enough. She's been here since before I got here. She's obviously calling it a day. And to be fair, I think I'm going to. I think I've got two phone shots that might just work. But it has given me composition a couple of composition ideas for sunsets and the winter because in the winter with this lot all frosted over and you get some beautiful water puddles on some of these rocks and they ice over so it's giving me a couple of ideas so i'm gonna go home and go to bed <laughs> i don't know what the time is should we have a look oh apparently not in that pocket Ah, oh dear. It's quarter past seven. I think this is first for me, quarter past seven. I've been out of the house since 20 to five and I've not actually got the camera out yet. <laughs> You've got to laugh because if you didn't, you'd just go and bash your head against the brick wall. So anyway, that's it. There is nothing more to today, but this is the stuff you don't normally see. In the mornings when you come out, with the best intentions you don't get a thing except a couple of really rubbishy phone shots because i've got a samsung a 70 something or other and it's rubbish at photography but then again i didn't like to take photos with i bought it to make phone calls with so i'm gonna have a little scout around see if i can find any likely compositions and then i'm going home so if you think it's all rainbows and unicorns and stunning sunrises and beautiful seas, you're very sadly mistaken. <laughs> Catch you next weekend. Bye.